We're days away from Canada signing the UN Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration, a document that is finally being exposed around the world for being what it is, a very Orwellian and totalitarian pledge to have countries surrender their immigration systems to that of the international community and specifically the United Nations, this globalist fantasy. Well, one of the things that has gotten a lot of attention, thankfully, is the provision in the compact that restricts freedom of coverage for the media. Signatories agree to promote independent, objective, and quality reporting of media outlets, including internet-based information, including by sensitizing and educating media professionals on migration-related issues and terminology, investing in ethical reporting standards and advertising, and stopping allocation of public funding or material support to media outlets that systematically promote intolerance, xenophobia, racism, and other forms of discrimination towards migrants in full respect for the freedom of the media. Now, that little throwaway line in there about the respect for freedom of the media is merely to ameliorate some of the obvious concerns that this provision threatens the media. The reason people think that is because it actually does. And beyond the sensitizing and educating component, I want to focus in on a very key factor of this that has not gotten as much attention as it should, and that is the restriction of public allocation of money, of government money, of government funds for media outlets that run afoul of what the UN says is an approved narrative on migrants and immigration and illegal immigrants, perhaps. If government didn't bankroll media, this would not be as much of an issue, but this comes just a few weeks after Justin Trudeau announced that there was going to be a government-appointed panel to decide which media outlets in Canada get access to the $595 million media slush fund intended to save the journalism industry from its inevitable collapse, at least in its current form. So now all of a sudden we have a framework where Justin Trudeau has said that his government will decide which media outlets qualify for government money. And now we have a pact that Canada will be signing to say that government will withhold public funds from media outlets that systematically discriminate against migrants. The problem is that the compact in question doesn't distinguish between illegal and illegal migrants. More importantly, the compact doesn't really discuss any of the situations where it may be completely legitimate to criticize migration, such as criticizing illegal border crossing, an ongoing problem in Canada, or criticizing illegal immigrants and the way that they are sometimes dealt with by governments. So now we have a very real risk here. Canada, despite saying this compact is non-binding, is in fact signing this because of a full-throated endorsement of what this compact is pushing. And even if the UN isn't able to enforce this, Canada and Canada's government can enforce this and can make it binding as far as Canadian law is concerned. So media outlets need to be very wary of this, that now there is a government-approved and a UN-approved narrative as to how you can discuss migration and immigration and how you are allowed to have these conversations. And if you do it the wrong way, your money is on the line. It's the taxpayer money. It's government money. And by bankrolling the media, what Justin Trudeau has done is put into question where the media's loyalties are. And I think the timing of this should concern all Canadians. We have a government willingly signing away its autonomy and its sovereignty to an international body. And all of a sudden, it's media outlets that are going to be responsible for the re-education that the government is paying for, which means you and I are. For the True North Initiative, I'm Andrew Lutton.